Wonderful. Now, uh, I was also going to ask you about the lightning talk that you did on Wednesday at the opening. Okay, um, yes. You were talking about uh, rep wraps, 3D printers, yes. and education. What was the idea behind yes. that? Yes. Okay. A lot of confusion ensued from, from that because 3D printers have been around for a number of years now. Um, they, they've existed for a couple of decades essentially, mm. but, but Adrian Bauer in, um, in the UK and Vic Oliver and a number of people around them um, have been working on that essentially since 2005, 2006. Uh, the Linux called 2006 and the Dunedin, Vic showed a lab contraption and a glue gun and said essentially we want to do something like this, but we have nothing. Um, we have to work it all out again because we don't want to use expensive tools, equipment. Um, so by 2007, we had it working. Um, late 2007, so you know, a year and a half later, that was pretty good. Um, early versions were very finicky. Now that's all developed very, very much. I mean, it's an entire industry now. Yes. But I think a lot of credit needs to go back to Adrian Bauer and and Vic Oliver and Jack Hook and, and, and a couple of people whose name I can't remember right now. Um, the the original RepRap team originally. Yeah. Um, and um, that, that, that's it. Now, one of the things that they were aiming for is really opening up that space. The fact that you can have a, a 3D printer in your home or at your neighbors or at the local, local group really opens up the possibilities of what you can do with it and mm. what you can learn with it. Now, so far, just to project that towards schools, many schools, if not most schools actually, at high school level have one in their manual arts lab for instance that's really really cool because people can actually work on the design and get it printed hold it in their hand which is absolutely awesome um, now that's really cool but i think we can do so much better because the entire chain from start of all the hardware software firmware it's and and the the design software it's all open so it can also be used as an educational tool there are no other manufacturing gadgets in our home. Mm. You know, we, we produce things in our kitchen. A printer is as close as we get really with a 2D printer. It, it is, but it's, not an it's, a consumer, it's a consumer product. Yes. Um, product, how many people have built their own printer? It, it used to sometimes get a bit hacked, mm. you know, in the old days when people couldn't replace do what the they needed to. Replace the printhead with something else? And yeah, replace printing with uh, the printhead with something else or replace the way it was controlled or turn it into a plotter. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it was done, but that's more hack. In this case, you can explore from the ground up why the, the mechanical structure is the way it is. How do you make sure it's sturdy? Could you make it bigger? How much bigger can you make it? Um, could you improve the design? Well, yes, you can. Um, you can make it a metal frame, you can make it a wooden frame. The one I have now is a new model by, by Vic Oliver. Mm. Um, it's called the Diamond Mine version, version 2. And it actually has a, an MDF cnc frame. And what I think is really cool, rather than spending a lot of time building that frame, the entire thing can be built in three hours. Wow. And that is revolutionary because you say it's a flat pack 3D printer? It's essentially a flat pack 3D printer. It only has four parts that are wrap wrapped at the moment. So they're a 3D printer. Other parts are CNC'd. Yes. So there's MDF part. There are HTPE parts, so high density polyethylene. Um, and there are some ac acetal parts. But that's a bit waxy. It's mm -hmm. still plastic. Um, and it, it slides on the runner for the ver various axes. Now, each of those parts could be printed, yes. but this is faster to produce and, you know, gets you going quicker mm. uh, rather than having to find someone who will print them for you and it makes it actually cheaper to, to yeah. purchase. So, the trick of the three, the three hours, many, many explorers don't care, but when you're working with a teenager, the attention span doesn't last through many, many weeks or months the project of building that. You do make progress, but a bit of, you know, not necessarily instant gratification, but you do want to get Some somewhere. Some gratification to at least Yeah, and you, do, you don't, there are no intermediate steps in the rep wrap when you can actually produce something before it's there. Yes. You know, there's not much you can do with it before it's there. The fact that you can build it in three hours, whether you then spread that out over a number of days, you know, that means that there are fewer things to worry about. Yeah. And when it's built, this model will not print a trapezoid or parallelogram, it will print a square. It may be 
not quite scaled correctly. It may not be printing at the right size, X, Y, or Z, and you might need to calibrate a bit. Other things need to be calibrated, like the feeding of the filament, the temperature, there's variance in there, so work needs to be done. But you can print something, something will come out, it won't be perfect, but it looks pretty decent as mm. a start, and that's a real gratification thing. Now, that, that already is a major step, and then exploring again, no, I've already mentioned the, the mechanical aspect of it, um, there's more to it. Mm. Um, chemistry, the filament um, that is very, very popular is PLA. That's been around for a long time. Vic had the suggestion of, can we use that as a filament for, for the wrap wrap? Uh, the answer is yes. So that's why everybody's using it now. And it melts at a lower temperature than ABS. It's much easier to deal with and it's biodegradable. You can stick it in the compost bin and it is gone within, 12, uh, within uh, six months. Nice. Contrary to plastic, which lasts a thousand to a few years and causes a lot of damage. So um, a chemistry teacher in a high school classroom can make PLA. It is fermented starch, mm -hmm. so it is um, essentially running something like potato or corn through pressure cooker, deep pressurizing it rather rapidly, which is why you want to do it in a lab and not in your kitchen, <laughs> yes. and various other steps that I'm not entirely familiar with yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, people could make filament in high school. You can actually grow it and then turn it into filament. You know, so you it can, can actually go across multiple disciplines of the high school education curriculum. Absolutely. Um, and then, of course, you get into the dyna dynamics or the fluid dynamics. If I've got that right, you know, you have to melt the plastic. It has to accept. It needs the right amount of viscosity yes. to be able to print, not glob, but you need to be able to span something without it sagging. You know, there, it's. You can actually look at that, calculate it. Also, if you push in into the extruder, 10 centimeters of filament of 3 millimeters, how much comes out of the other end, given that the nozzle is actually a different diameter? There's calculations in there. Um, then the head needs to move, you need to draw a circle. Well, I'm originally a programmer, uh, self-taught, but you know, at, at the time when computers didn't have nice graphics, I know how to programmatically draw a circle, but many kids now don't. Mm. Um, it uses high school maths, year 9, 10 maths, can easily accomplish that. So you can actually learn how the system is actually controlled. You can look at the source code, you can hack it, you can prove it, you can improve on something and see if it works better. So, you know, all those aspects could be used inside a school. Now, I'm not expecting the school curriculum to change and actually plonk, plonk a wrap wrap in the middle. That's not expected. But some schools do do extra things yeah. and have projects like that. Montessori schools are more likely to do this. Homeschool groups are very likely to do it because they often, like Montessori, grab one topic, um, which is often a country or you know some aspect like this, and then explore all their subjects using that particular interest, which really captures the imagination of a child. You know, they yeah. really will understand what's going on after that. I think it's been really interesting at this LCA the number of talks which we've had that have um, basically had education, high school education or even primary yes. education as a key piece. I mean, Jonathan also this morning was talking Absolutely, about yes, this, I was just uh, satellite thinking, stuff yes. in education. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess yeah. if you look back sort of five, seven, ten years ago, mm. um, the closest we were getting were the, the little um, uh, laptops, the green laptops, what they called uh, OLPC. The OLPC, yeah, that's right. Um, and, and that was the kind of only concrete yeah. piece of this is for education that we've done. Yeah. Um, I, I, I must say, though, on top of that, Debian had its Debian Junior project, um, yes. which is to, to bring together some packages as, a, as a, a process. But I think now we're reaching out to the hardware side of things, which yes. for children, I think, is a, a lot more what's well, tactile. They can react, relate to it, yes. they can see it happening. And, yes. um, I think the, Ad the Arduino is really yes. important with that. Again, it has nice a little bit of instant, done a good job. It, it has a little bit of instant gratification to it. You mm -hmm. know, you can do very little and already get something blinking, blinking. which is physical. Yes. And and people, kids these days do expect that, and I'm I'm not at all cranky about that. Their computers are much more fancy than also, than what we were used to. A, a lot of the, <laughs> the technology that a lot of the children play with these days is prepackaged, shrink wrapped, and yeah. they can't open it and experiment with it. Whereas yes. I think yeah. By the time you get but they're quite willing to. They're willing to. Yes. But, you know, they're careful and cautious of, of breaking warranties of things yeah, and, right. and the cost of replacing it. Whereas if you give somebody a, a thirty-five dollar pie um, and a bunch of resistors or an Arduino and a couple of LEDs, oh yeah, stuff happens. Stuff yeah. happens. Yeah, that's stuff right. Happens. So that's the plan. So the plan. this is work in progress. Um, I'm moving house next week, so I'm not touching this for the next couple of weeks. Good luck with that. Uh, thank you. Um, 
also thanks to my wife who puts up with me being here while she's packing this week. So. Some of us are very lucky. I, I, in the same Indeed case, I've been uh, leaving home each morning at about 7 a.m., um, skipping out and not getting home until 11 or 12 at night with the events yep. that we've had on and the, the, right, the amazing yeah. hallway track that we have here at LCA. Yes, it's um, astonishing. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So we'll see you again at the next LCA next year, wherever we end up? Indeed. I, I hope so. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Ian Lentz, thank you ever so much. We'll see you soon.